What about people that rely too much on somebody else taking them where they want to go, though? So that's the thing. It's finding that balance because I see that. I definitely see the, mm -hmm. the workaholics. And then I see also the flip side of the people that maybe they got a great degree in something and they're not utilizing it and they have such great talent and they hold themselves back, whether it's... But you got to trust that there's a reason why they're doing that. You know, it, it, it really, that, that has building an ensemble. That lesson is one of the hardest lessons that I had to learn is that what I see in someone, their potential, or maybe one element of their creativity, one element of their passion does not encompass them as a whole. And it, you have to respect the fact that you will see potential in people that they do not want to live up to. They may even want to say they want to live up to it. They may want to they realize that there's value in that potential. They get it. They see it, and they realize that society places a value on it, so they will highlight it. But they won't put in the work that it takes to develop it. I almost never, and, and this is, you know, there's a lot of actors who follow me on the internet, and this is something you guys need to know. I almost never work with an actor who has not been performing for 20 years. Well, Tenny, you're working with some very young actors. Yep. Gerard Marzilli and Danielle K. Jones started performing when they were five years old professionally. They have been on stage every freaking day, four hours a day at least, putting into that study of conflict that we were talking about earlier all the time. They are masters of their craft. And in another 20 years, they will be legends. And ultimately, that is what keeps my interest. That's what keeps me challenged, because they are masters. That should terrify a director. I, you know, it should. That's the point. <laughs> That's the fun. <laughs> and if you haven't, you know, if you haven't, you know, if you, if you haven't been in combat for, for, for 10 years, they're not gonna ask you if you wanna get on a special ops team. You're not gonna get sent into Beirut and told that it's a secret and no one can ever find out you're there because you don't have the skills. Like, it's a craft. It's a craft that has to be developed and developed and developed. Talent is overrated. Gerard has a great story. He's studied every kind of acting style under the sun, with, the, with some notable exceptions that he's working on, you know? But, um, but he loves to tell the story of, and, and so this is like fourth hand, forgive me if I have this wrong, but Robert Duvall, was studying Meisner at the same time that guys like Al Pacino were. Was it Meisner, Sanford Meisner? I think it was, but forgive me, this is, take it with a grain of salt, guys. Bottom line, he shows up in class and the teacher, Meisner, is like, well, I just, I'm not, I'm not seeing it in the audition. I'm not seeing it in the audition. I'm sorry, I can't. And Robert Duvall's like, you've got to let me take this class. This is all I can do. I don't, I'm going to wash your toilets. I will, I will clean this theater every day, all day, it's gonna be spotless. All I'm asking is for four hours of your time when class is in session. I'll sit in the back and I'll do my work and, and Meisner said, well, you, you'd better freaking do the work. You'd better show up. You'd better be the most prepared kid in class. You know what I mean? 10 years later, Meisner's saying, well, that Robert Duvall sure worked hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I work with actors who who made themselves talent. Talent just is like a little percentage that determines how long it's going to take you to become good at something. And it's not gonna skew more than 10 or 20% in any direction. You know, if you love acting, you've got the tools to be a great actor. You've, you've just, you've literally got to make it a lifestyle choice, acknowledge the fact that you're gonna be making some huge sacrifices in other parts of your life to make it work and then dig in and build those schools. And, and, you know, some kid shows up in Los Angeles and he worked in modeling and he's very spunky and he's very energetic. I, I bet you, I bet you right away I'll see he doesn't speak from his diaphragm. I bet you right away I'll see that he's, um, he's not as smooth and lithe and he doesn't have as many characters in his body. His movement training is lacking. His voice training is lacking. He doesn't have the tools. Turn around and look at an actor like George Clooney or Meryl Streep, one of those actors everyone wants to be. Even that kid who shows up from New York for modeling wants to be George Clooney. He does. Because George Clooney's super cool. Why is he cool? Because he has the fundamentals to reinvent himself. He doesn't ever need to be the same person two days in a row. Ever. Because he has so many skills and so many honed crafts. 
He could walk out of the door and be an old man one day and a young man the next, and he could be any, any different number of George Clooney's that he wants to be. And when he runs into a wall in his career and people don't want to cast him as X or Y, he's like a football player. He doesn't even know there's a wall there. He just rolls right around it. You know? He just slips right around it like the wall's not even there. Like, like he's a river over the rocks, just whoosh. And now George Clooney's making another movie with Steven Soderbergh about something else. Why? Fundamentals. Because he can, because he's got eight gazillion tools. And it just, he doesn't ma he doesn't even notice that there's a hammer missing. <laughs> Keep the hammer. I'll move on. I'll build my couch anyway.